Hi fellow gardeners, welcome to Garden with Jenny, I'm Jenny. Today I want to do a couple of things. I want to give you a seed update in this video. I want to show you my new plants and I want to possibly talk to you about the job update that's been going on with me, which is pretty exciting. So I hope to get that far um, without rambling on too long and making this video a half an hour. So let's dive right into my seeds. I was away this weekend, which you might recall from the last video. I went up to Buffalo, New York to see my folks because um, I haven't seen them since December and I was missing them and Sean, I think, um, wanted to see his folks or they wanted to see him or whatever. I don't know. So we drove six hours up, six hours back, came back Sunday night and, um, well, you'll see the results of what happened this weekend. So let me kneel down and I will turn the camera around. So, if you can remember from last time's video, uh, I was hemming and hawing about my California Wonder Bell Peppers, which are a green pepper that ripens to red if you leave it on the pepper plant longer than just say if it was turning green. So, I was complaining about the germination of those seeds and Finally, the one that I had planted first, this guy right here, um, he has finally germinated and he was there Sunday night when we came back. So as you can see, this whole front line has completely germinated now. Um, so these are the three packs that are going to Sean's co-workers and boss. So I need to make sure that those stay super healthy. These right here are going to be ours, and then these in the back I might give away to some people once I get them potted up. Now, as you can see, some of them are starting to dry out. What I did when I was gone, you can see that these in the back are really wet. So, when I went to Buffalo, this tray does not have a drainage hole, and because I knew I wasn't going to be here all weekend, I put a little, probably about an inch of water, maybe not even an inch, a half an inch of water in the bottom, so that the... Soil, well it's not really soil, it's seed start mix. Um, so that the mix could absorb that water up from the bottom, kind of like what capillary action does, and keep these guys um, hydrated while I was gone. You'll notice that my onion seeds are a lot bigger than what they were. I had the timer for the lighting system. Um, I had it on 10 hours a day while I was gone. It was only a day and a half that we were gone, um, two days max. So um, I cut the, t the lighting time back because of them. I didn't want them to dry out too much. And I also didn't have the heat mat on all weekend because um, you're not supposed to plug any kind of heated appliance into the timer. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is the plants that I had gotten. So when I was originally working in Buffalo at the nursery, we had a greenhouse that had house plants. And um, when that nursery closed, when the nursery part of the business closed, anyways, they still have their landscape division, but anyways, um, when the nursery closed, they sold all of their plants and materials at a discounted price. So in here I've got Crown of Thorns, I've got a bunch of succulents. This one's a jade. E.T. Fingers, I believe, is what that one's called, or that's the nickname. And I'm not 100% sure of each of the varieties of these other ones. This guy, I'm not sure what he's called anymore, and I think this is a type of pilea. Um, so there's been some damage in the transport, as you can maybe see. This guy's head has been chopped off or busted off, so here's one of these leaves one of these leaves down here. Um, this guy's a little leggy. I need to find out if if I were to cut him back to say this node, if this would branch out and he would be okay. So I need to do a little bit of inspection on that. Um, this guy, this crown of thorns actually looks like he might have mites, which I'm going to um, talk to you about in a little while. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just looks weird. I don't know. I have to inspect him some more because if he's got mites, then I need to spray everything. Which, here's his little flowers. Aren't those precious? Those are cute. Anyways, okay. 
I think this might have some sort of mite going on. Do you see the way that leaf looks? Um, that big one that's in the middle of the frame to the left of the flowers, it looks like it's stippled. So we may have a slight mite infestation on this guy as well. Um, it was hard because my dad um, does not have experience with taking care of house plants, so um, I was I was trying to diagnose problems over the phone, which is rather difficult. Um, this is the cactus succulent soil mix that I had um, purchased probably about two years ago um, that I had sealed up in my basement. I bought it when I had my other jade that I had actually thrown out earlier this year because it kept flopping out of the pot. It didn't produce enough roots to sustain itself. Um, so I can use this mix on a lot of those plants in there. And then this is my Aunt Vi's Christmas cactus that we had bought for her um, last year, I think, for Christmas or the year before. Um, and when she passed away, I asked if I could have it. Now you can see the soil is extremely wet. Um, so this is going to be, and it's extremely heavy, so it's going to sit and I'm going to let this dry down. Um, but it does not look too, too bad considering how wet it is. You can see that there's what looks like the start of a flower bud. There's only a few. And I think that's because you have to have a certain um, temperature period to make it kind of go dormant um, for it to produce flower buds. And since it was in the nursing home, the nursing home's like 80 degrees. It's super hot in there. I'm surprised there's even a few on there. And then in this Rite Aid bag, I have some pots. So these these two right here, this tan one and this green one, are self-watering pots. They're a little bit difficult for me to use because um, if I don't drain, you can see there's a little self-watering section. If I don't drain that out, sometimes it sits wet and then I rot my plants. But these here are bonsai pots, really nice quality bonsai pots. Um, my friend Luann, she was my manager at Many's. These were things that she used to order. Um, this one's got some writing on it, which is pretty sweet. I have no idea what it means. It could mean like death to you or something, and I wouldn't know. But <laughs> Anyways, this guy's a little shallow, so I probably won't use him for the succulents. Maybe I will, I don't know. Um, but this would be super cool to put succulents in and do like a little planter with maybe put the succulent off to one side and then add some stone to it um, just for like a little dish garden type thing. You know, like uh, a, f a succulent type fairy garden. Fairy gardens are really popular with a lot of people now because um, especially with like little kids and everything, they are, um, kids love, 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 um, very gardens. So right now I'm taking you back farther into our house. Let me turn this fan off first. Um, I had treated my anthurium and um, my anthurium and my coffee plant for mites. Wow, it smells like cloves in here. Holy Moses. And I had the fan on the past couple of minutes. So I sprayed these about uh, half an hour ago. And so this little guy down here is my coffee plant. That's my anthurium. I did the anthurium as a precautionary measure because it was near a plant at my dad's house that had spider mites that I'm sure he purchased from the nursery and didn't realize that there were mites on it and then brought it home and they exploded. And there we have it. So this guy had mites on him and I had dunked him in just water before I left my dad's house and tried to squish them with like paper towel, but they're so small, I know that there's a chance that I left probably a bunch on there and they could be hiding out in the notches where I couldn't squish. So he's being treated, he's being treated, and I might bring that crown of thorns in to be treated um, with this Bonide Midex spray. So this is um, supposed to be organic. That's what their brown label up here means. Um, this has cottonseed oil, clove oil, and garlic oil in it, which is why it's woo in my bathroom right now. Um, mites, thrips, aphids, and you know what? 
I didn't read the label, guys. Shame on me. I didn't check to see if I could use it on those plants. Um, which I'm sure it's fine. Because this is what we sell for mites and things. Um, so, here's your different lists of mites, which I definitely had two spotted spider mite on there. Thrips, aphids, insane. Um, gives you flowers, ornamental shade trees, roses, shrubs, evergreens, all sorts of stuff in here. Um, we used to use this a lot in the greenhouse because mites are difficult to control. Um, Okay, so I'm just kind of reading this area here. I always tell customers to definitely read the label first um, before you apply anything because you are um, if it's not on the label you're not supposed to use it. Indoor and outdoor use for this guy. So basically what I did was I sprayed them in my bathroom and I just have them sitting in the tub right now so that they aren't leaking everywhere. Um, and uh, I turn the fan back on. Uh, they're quarantined, so to speak, too, still. So um, there's no chance of the mites traveling if I missed them right now. You know, like if I sprayed them and I didn't fully come in contact with the mite, um, or if I missed, you know, if they were hiding and the spray didn't get to where they were hiding, which I think they did because I was spraying them upside down and all this sorts of stuff, paper underneath them, uh, it should be fine. I should have gotten the majority of them. But this way they're quarantined, so I'll do another spray probably in about a week. So next Tuesday, um, I will definitely give them another spray and, um, we'll go from there. They're a pest that's rather difficult. Um, a lot of times you don't see uh, mites until there's a huge explosion of them. And then they can be a little bit difficult to control, especially if you're not getting them all. So I have to be diligent about this sort of thing right now. And um, I want to make sure that they don't infect anything else that's in my house because the spider mites frequent a lot of different plants, house plants and outside plants as well. Um, they're a bit of a nuisance. So that's that. So those are all my new plants. That's my new stuff that I'm excited about. Now it's only 13 minutes right now for the video count. So I think I'm going to tell you my good news. So yesterday I went for another interview at another place. They had um, were considering me for a position, like a job rotation position at this one place where um, I'd partially do container gardening and then I'd partially do some online e-commerce business for them because I have a little bit of experience with it now with my Etsy shop. They were interested in that, but they haven't made me a definite offer yet. So, um, that was around 2 o'clock yesterday. I went for that meeting. I was there about an hour. It took me half an hour to get home. Um, I got home. I changed. Walked out into my living room. And my phone was vibrating. And it was the lady from the other place that I had interviewed with on Friday. And she called me and offered me a job. And honestly, the feel of that interview was so, so compelling. Um, <laughs> BB-8. The interview was so compelling. The way I felt during the interview, um, the confidence I had, the comfort level that I was displaying within myself, the way I was feeling, um, was really good. Uh, the whole family 
came in for the second interview and was taking turns asking me questions about my experience, about my knowledge, about how I felt about customer service, which um, I don't know if I've really displayed a whole lot of it with you guys, but it's my favorite part about the job, probably, besides being with plants, is that I can educate other people how to take care of plants. And that's pretty exciting um, stuff for me personally. I like to be able to teach people that, you know, you can overwater plants. You can, everybody knows you can underwater plants, but a lot of people don't realize that you can overwater plants by watering too often. Um, so, uh, it's just an exciting thing for me to do in the business. So, I was explaining to them that I enjoy customer service, that it's my favorite part about the job. I like being able to get customers what they need and not sell them things they don't need just to make a sale. Um, the fact that it's important when you don't know something to say, I'm just not sure, let me find somebody else to give you the correct information. And then in turn doing that, you learn a little bit more. Um, so they asked me about that. They asked me about my knowledge on trees and shrubs, which I'm, uh, I'm pretty weak in. It's my weakest aspect, I think, so far in horticulture is I just don't know a whole lot about trees and shrubs. So right now I'm reading a hydrangea book about um, how to grow hydrangeas and getting them to bloom in the northern regions because a lot of this, the cultivars that are in the macrophylla species don't necessarily like the conditions of the north so they don't necessarily bloom very well. Um, because of the colder climates, they die back to the ground, and then them dying back to the ground takes pretty much the flower buds away, because the most of the flowering happens at the tip, the tip bud, which is the apical bud, and um, or the terminal bud. I'm sorry, terminal bud. So when there's dieback, that terminal bud goes away, and um, you lose your flowers. So right now I'm learning about how to try and prevent that or how to combat that issue of hydrangeas in the north. There are other wooded varieties like at home I have a quick fire hydrangea which is in my parents yard and it blooms every year without hesitation. It's beautiful and it um, attracts a lot of pollinators which is great for anybody around that has um, you know, a vegetable garden and stuff like that. Um, so I'm learning a little bit more and a little bit more. Anyways, so I was telling that I learned all that after my interview. Um, I told them I knew that some got cut to the ground, others stay wooded. Um, and I told, I was honest and I said, to be honest, I'm not sure when you prune each type because they specifically asked me that question and I was not going to lie. Um, I am weak in knowing some of that. I have general pruning principles that I use when I prune. Don't prune after probably October 1st, depending on where you are. You know, um, do a general shaping during the summer. I know some evergreens, if you trim them while they're pushing out new growth, they will burn. They will get a browning color in their... Um, in their needles and then you'll have to trim them again after it's hardened off so I so like our uh, I think they're Colorado blue spruce or their dwarf blue spruce whichever I have them in front of my mom's house I did that two summers ago I trimmed them too early and sure enough I burned them by trimming them too early and then I waited and I trimmed them again and they were fine so it's all about um, little things that I've picked up over the years that I know the little bit. Um, obviously I know like Wygelias and Lilacs and um, Honeysuckle Shrubs which is also a vining plant as well. Um, so I displayed as much information and as much knowledge as I could during the interview and they said to me in the interview oh another question they asked was if you have a big tree and you want to plant a bed under the tree what would you tell a customer? And I said, well, 
I'm more inclined of building a raised bed underneath the tree. Just make sure that you're not suffocating the flare root with the soil. Make sure you keep the flare root exposed um, and plant in a raised bed around it because then you don't have to worry about the tree necessarily sapping all the water from the rest of the plants. They have their own soil um, to pull water from. Uh, that you're probably not going to plant, you're not going to get anything to grow under a black walnut because of the um, the toxin that it emits through its root system into the soil. And um, they asked me my perennial knowledge, which of course I was extremely confident with because that's what I've been dealing with the majority of my career is selling annuals and perennials. And I think um, my knowledge base they were impressed with. So when I was there, they said to me that I seemed very knowledgeable and that they felt I would be an excellent addition to the company. When I left, they said they would have an answer for me on Monday, which was yesterday. And I certainly got a call and they offered me a position. And I have decided that because of the feeling that I got during the interview and the way they seem to respect my plant knowledge and the base that I have now and the experiences that I have been through, um, I decided to take the job with them. There is a layoff during the winter, but I'm okay with that because Sean and I are planning on having a vow renewal ceremony back home and then I don't have to ask for time off, you know? And um, I think this is a really good opportunity. So, um, I was very, very happy yesterday afternoon when I made the decision. And, um, you know, the other place hasn't made me an offer yet, but I just don't have the same, the same vibe coming from them. They're more interested in what I've been doing with Etsy than the knowledge I have about plants. And if I took that job, I may or may not be happy, and I don't want to take a job and say that I'm going to do great in it and be super happy and never leave when I just don't know. You know, I've done computer work and stuff before, which I don't mind doing it, I like doing it, but I don't know if I could do it every single day as a career. And I need to be around plants. So I made my decision and regardless of what they offer me, if they offered me 17 an hour, it doesn't compare to the love that I have for plants. And I'm sure that by now, you guys know that I have a rather abundance of love for different types of plants and learning about plants and talking about plants and that's far more important to me than any kind of dollar amount. So, lesson is make sure whatever you do in life you love what you do because then you won't work a day in your life. So, that's that. I'm gonna wrap this up and until next time, stay green, folks.